Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show is brought to you by Air Patrol North. Visit airpatrolnorth.ca. He is the current generation of hockey's first family. Travis Howe gives us some historical perspective and chats up NHL breakaway. Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show, coming up! Our guest today was born in Hartford, Connecticut, when his dad played there. He now lives in Detroit. He is son of legendary defenseman Mark Howe, a Hall of Famer. He is a grandson of Mr. Hockey himself, Gordie Howe, also a Hall of Famer. He has coached junior A hockey. He has helped develop some current NHL players. And he is involved with the new NHL Breakaway Initiative. Please welcome to the program, Travis Howe. Travis, great to have you here, my friend. Oh, thanks for having me, Joe. Nice to meet you. You know, we're going to talk about NHL Breakaway in just a bit because it's some pretty exciting stuff we've got going on there. But first, let's talk about hockey's real first family. Uh, first of all, I want to hear a little bit about, about your involvement in hockey. Obviously, it uh, was hard not to be involved in hockey at some level. Yes, yes, for sure. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep it relatively brief. I, I've been involved in, in hockey, of course, my entire life. Um, you know, beginning is an end. I don't know. I, I, I almost feel like I probably learned how to skate before I learned how to walk. But, um, uh, but, but of course, you know, you know, uh, played youth hockey growing up. Um, I stopped at the midget AAA level and, uh, and then I found, um, um, then I found a passion and, and trying to, you know, pursue some, uh, you know, career on the, um, you know, on the coaching and scouting side of, of hockey. So, so for the first few years of my uh, my adulthood, I um, I started scouting, and then and then I went and coached a junior A hockey team up in uh, Syracuse, New York. Um, actually, the I took over late in the season of their final year in the Ontario Provincial Junior A League. So uh, you know, went up and played some games up up there in Ontario. Uh, you know, that first year, and then um, and then I helped co-found a company that uh, we had for 17 years. And, um, and we, we did everything you could, you could, you know, think of in the, in the realm of, uh, youth hockey globally. Um, and that, that included running tournaments worldwide, uh, running a lot of elite spring programs. Um, you know, and so you, you reference some NHL players and stuff. There's, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I'm not sitting here saying I, I developed those guys, but we, 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 we had elite, um, elite spring teams that we put together and showcased some scouts, et cetera. And, and, you know, tried to help develop them and, and expose them to some higher level hockey, you know, surrounded by other great players at, at, at the, at their age. And, um, yeah, so we had that for 17 years and then, and then I joined a company called Sweet, uh, which I'm working for today. And, um, it's the, it's the company that, uh, basically, you know, has created, you know, if you will, the NHL breakaway program, uh, where we've worked of course, directly with the NHL as a partner, uh, as well as the NHL Players Association and NHL Alumni Association. So, uh, so we've been been working on that the last uh, last little while. Well, we're going to get into that that sweet development in, in shortly. But uh, I want, would want to talk first of all about you know your uh, your family, I mean, hockey's first family. First, we want to start with your your grandmother, Colleen. Uh, a lot of folks don't realize the role that Colleen played in uh, running Gordy's business affairs and, you know, starting the first ever junior A hockey team south of the border, uh, opening Gordy Howe Hockey Land. Uh, she wrote three books, did tons of charity work along the way. Uh, tell us what you remember about your grandma. Um, I love that you brought that up and that's, I'm, I'm enjoying the photos that are on the screen there, but uh, it's funny because actually uh, recently she was inducted into the Michigan Sports Hall of Fame. And so that was, a really special evening for, for our family. Um, you know, I, I have, I have three young daughters at home. My oldest is 10, but, um, you know, none of them had, had ever met my grandmother. And of course they know everything or have heard everything about, uh, you know, their great grandfather Gordy and, and, and everybody else, but, uh, you know, you know, not as much as spoken about my grandmother. And so I, I think at that, you know, that evening, um, they got to, it was special for me because my, my daughters got to learn a little bit more about, uh, my grandmother and what a amazing woman she was and everything she did for, 
um, you know, not, not only people in hockey, but Marsha Dimes and, you know, and, and countless uh, contributions to, to charities and things like that. So. Yeah, she was amazing. And, and anybody who knew her knew, knew that she was amazing. It really was kind of the brains of the organization all the way through. It. <laughs> and tough. You know, and tough. Get tough. Gord, yeah, exactly. Gordy right. Gord was the tough guy on the ice, but she was the tough one off it. So, yeah, yeah, that, that's what I heard too. So, uh, some, you, know, you probably knew this, but some people don't. That your, your, your grandfather was also a, a heck of a baseball player, but the Red Wings made him quit. Uh, what do you remember about? in the stories of his, his baseball prowess. Yeah. Um, well, I knew, you know, I, I, I actually, uh, because I used to live five minutes from my grandfather. And so, and, um, you know, in the later stages when he was, when he was just doing some traveling and, and getting out and seeing people and stuff, I used to join him on, on some of those, on the, some of those trips on occasion, you know, sometimes it's 24 hours there, 24 hours there. So it could be a quick fun trip. And, so of course, lots of stories over the years with my grandfather, but, um, yeah, baseball was, was another, uh, was another love of his. And, um, you know, I know he was great friends with, uh, Al Kaline here in Detroit. And, um, you know, I think you used to go out there and play batting, you know, and do batting practice and stuff with the Tigers and, um, you know, but it, I, I, uh, I, I remember seeing one photo in particular of him back in, I believe back in Saskatoon. Um, but where he played some, I believe minor pro ball and, uh, yeah, to your point, you know, they, they made him stop, you know, is, is don't get hurt. Right. Of course. Uh, he also had a brother who played in the NHL. Some people don't know that his brother Vic suited up for the Rangers for 33 games, uh, wearing number 11 in the video watching here. Uh, what do you remember about your uncle, your great uncle? Sorry. Sure. Uh, yeah, Vic, I met, um, uh, a few times. So, uh, you know, I think he lived uh I, I can't remember exactly but over in eastern canada somewhere and and um you know again a couple trips with uh with gordy and um you know when we, we'd uh we'd meet up with vic or something for a day and um so it was it was great uh you know great to meet one of my great uncles and you know of course the best stories are usually from the family members not the you know the, the Gordy House stories that I hear that I, I enjoy them more coming from my father or maybe his brother Vic or something than uh, Gordy because he you know he's not going to boast about himself. So. Right, he was a pretty humble guy, no doubt about that. So, uh, you know, Gordy, one of the all-time greats, uh, pride of Floral, Saskatchewan, uh, the twenty-three time All Star, honored in Floral, Saskatchewan by Hockey Night in Canada. This is back in 1965 after he scored his 600th NHL goal. He had already passed Rocket Richard to become the all-time goals leader uh, right here. We have a clip from your grandfather, actually, your grandmother and great-grandfather, who said, hey, pal, took you long enough to get there. Let's roll that, Vic. I, I, all I can say, he should have had that good in Montreal sooner. <laughs> <laughs> but the, we were waiting for that 600. was yeah. too long, was it? Yeah. You know, the, that night he had three pretty nice shots there. You're glad to see him put it in. Oh, I sure was glad to see it over with because it was a strain on him no matter what he says. Right at this point, our lives are so filled with many busy things, our boys playing hockey, etc. We haven't really had a moment to take time to appreciate the fact that uh, Gord has reached this great gain. We hope that he'll go on to many other great goals, perhaps the 700 that everyone's talking about now from 600. But uh, really, in our lives, we feel that uh, Gordy's greatness is surpassed mainly by the fact that he is such a wonderful husband and father. Leave that on. <laughs> you want to leave that on? You want to hear that repeated, do you, Gordy? Do you really think that's what you meant? I mean about your achievements, uh, not about you being a wonderful husband. Oh, that's part that, of right? it. <laughs> do you think, how long do you think you really go on? Well, as long as the legs will carry me, actually. You know, Great it's stuff. it's funny. Isn't that the truth, right? Isn't that the truth? For sure. Of course, I'm biased, but uh, it's it's funny. I, I've seen some of those clips before. I um maybe uh it, it's maybe it's funny to some, but um my my there's there's been times where I don't know maybe it's Saturday night or something, and <laughs> next thing you know, I'm I'm with my wife and I'm putting up YouTube. And we're watching um, Gordy Howe clips or something like that, you know, including the interviews and, and, and some of the some of the stuff that you just showed there. And that's um, 
it's it's great to relive those. And my wife said, you know what? Like it, it hit her. She said, and it, it hit me. She said, God, I wish I could go somewhere and just, you know, see family members, you know, back in time and stuff. So it's it's pretty cool that that, that stuff's out there. Yeah. And, and you know, Gordy was such a, a genuine person and, and a great guy. And well, he was my dad's favorite player, but I'm, I'm old enough to remember him playing, uh, you know, <laughs> watching him play. And uh, yeah, and, and, you know, playing with the, uh, you know, he had his uh, jersey retired way back in 1972 by the Red Wings. He's part of that incredible production line with Ted Lindsay and Sid Abel. They won four Stanley Cups in Detroit back in the 1940s. Uh, he was the NHL's all-time scoring leader until some guy named Gretzky came along. You know, that's pretty impressive. And here's a clip from that ceremony when they, they retired his jersey uh, from back in, in March of, of 1972. Let's roll that. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't care how old or how come you might be used to it, but, you know, when they you're singled out among individuals to be hung from the roof in recognition for something that you've played for years because of mere fact that you enjoyed the fans and you loved what you're doing, is a little extra that really comes in almost total surprise. And I want to thank the alumni for thinking of me and put me in the company of so many great Red Wing players, the Labats, for their participation and above all I want to thank you the fans because if anybody said what was responsible for longevity it's the friendship and respect I had for the fans here in Detroit and I want to thank you very much thank you yeah so this is seven years okay. and 180 goals after that last celebration I saw back <laughs> in Floral Saskatchewan um what uh, do you have a do you have a favorite story of, about your grandfather? Oh, geez. Um, I'll give you a, 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 I, I wouldn't say my favorite story, but as a, as a funny, I, I thought it was funny, maybe not at the time, but, uh, so again, growing up and, uh, I think it was when I was, my dad was in Philly, I was playing for a team called Philadelphia Low Flyers, I believe at the time. And, yeah. uh, who knows, maybe I was 11 or something like that, but, uh, it was around the time when Rob Brown scored, I think he put up like 50 goals when he was playing a line with Lemieux. And, um, so in the nineties and, uh, and, you know, he had this, uh, when he scored, he'd, he'd wrap his arm around like yeah, this and give yeah, a, yeah. the pump. So my, my grandfather and my grandma, you mentioned my grandma, she was the one kind of directing everything, but they, they, they would, they came to so many of my games, even though they lived up in Traverse city, Michigan at the time. And, um, you know, they were traveling everywhere to watch me play and visit their grandkids and stuff. But, um, so he was at one of my games and I scored and I was, I was going to do the Rob Brown and he yeah. never once ever said anything to me about how I played or anything. It was just always great game. And my father was the same, yeah, never, yeah. never once gave advice, but that was the only time he gave advice. He said, don't do that again. Don't do that again. <laughs> Uh, he, you know, he was, uh, he, he was one for being understated, not the, not the flashy thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, Gordy, you score a goal, skate to center ice, you know, wait for the puck to drop. That's it. Yeah. It's, a, okay, it's about so, your team, not about you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's about the, it, it's about the, the, the logo on the front of the Jersey, not the name on the back. Right. That's right. So, yeah. um, so, uh, of course, you're, you know, we saw that uh, presentation in 1972, but your grandfather's career was far from over. Uh, we have some video from a little bit later. Uh, this is actually, no, actually, this is from 1963. Uh, we have some video of this. So this look at, yeah, any idea who this guy might be? That looks like my dad. <laughs> yeah, that's your dad at six years of age. You're getting ready to, to <laughs> there he is, played a little hockey uh, at six years of age. And, and, um, an amazing opportunity for for your grandfather and your dad and your uncle, who all get a chance to play together with uh, with uh, Hartford Waiters, and uh, they were all honored in Hartford in 2011, along with your grandma, of course, uh, hockey's first family. Uh, did your dad, your grandpa, your uncle Marty ever talk about what it was like to play together? Yes, um, you know, my dad says it publicly all the time and and i think um you know or you know or just you know whenever we're chatting about stuff but you know his his greatest hockey memories are 
playing alongside, you know, playing with his father and his brother. And um, I, I mean, I can't heck my, my uh, Gordy was a grandfather by the time you retired in the NHL. I was, I was two, I was born in 1978. So um, uh. it's just, it's just kind of wild when you think about that, you know, he retired at the age of 52 and, and um yeah I, i've heard my dad say that over and over that that was uh without without a doubt that you know the, the best part of his career was just playing with his dad i mean who he's loved and admired his whole life well let's talk about your dad who had some pretty uh, pretty good offensive ability as well uh inducted into the hockey hall of fame in 2011 after over i think 400 goals i don't know how many points and everything else we, we actually have some of his induction speech from 2011. Let's roll some of that. Nick. I would like I to thank it. the WHA for giving me my start in pro yeah. hockey. It gave me the opportunity to play along such passionate players as Rich Preston, Ron Graham, Dave Keon, and to play for one of the finest people I've ever met in the game in coach Bill Deneen. It also gave me the opportunity to play six years alongside my brother and my father, a memory I will always cherish. Mr. and Mrs. Illich, Jimmy D, and Brian Murray gave me the opportunity to end my career in the uniform my father so, proud, so proudly wore for 25 years, something I dreamt of as a young child. I am truly blessed to be a proud member of one of the best organizations in all of sport for the past 19 years. Don't cry at me, Nolan. So, Travis, Asia, and Nolan. I know exactly how you feel right now because I watched my father be inducted into the Hall of Fame back in 1972. There's so much love there, I know you guys know it. The three of you are the most important people in my life. I am so proud to be your father. I love you all so very, very much. You mentioned that you wish I would have worn your number nine Red Wing jersey for just one game. I said your timing was pretty bad. You've never asked me for anything ever in your lifetime, so I'd like to honor your request at this time on a much bigger stage. Dad, I love you. Thank you. Wow. So uh, you were about to show us something, Travis, before the clip started. Oh, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, that, that was such an emotional uh, weekend, too, before I show you. That was, um, it was so special for the family, and I was almost starting to choke up there. But, uh, um, you know, just to see, you know, my dad, I think, took after Gory in the sense of he didn't really um, maybe talk so much, you know, about himself or show, uh, you know, what it meant to him. But I, you know, you could see in his eyes, and I could, you know, even though my my grandfather's health was declining at that stage, you know, you, I could see uh, what it meant, to, you know, for him to see that. And uh, it was it was a special weekend I'll never forget for sure. That was pretty cool. Um, but no, he, uh, I I just moved to a new home, so I don't have everything up. I usually have my my dad gave me a couple of his game worn jerseys. One's an All Star jersey, and one's from Philly. But he also gave me his his seven seven hundredth point in the NHL puck. So uh, I was uh, uh, so I got a couple things I still got to hang up. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah, that was such an awesome moment with your your your, your dad. He covered all the bases there, and and uh, it was a beautiful moment to you know, to have your grandfather there, and, and you know. And uh, yeah, it's pretty, pretty awesome. It's great to have um, uh, Marine McCrimmon was there too. She was shown there for a, for a split second, but uh, mm, to I'm honor the, the late Brad McCrimmon. And so that was pretty special as well. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful opportunity for the, yeah. Wonderful, wonderful night. Um, so yeah. So you're, you're between your uh, dad, uh, your uncle Marty, your grandfather, and, and uh, your great uncle Vic, uh, close to seventy years of, of combined pro hockey. <laughs> That's pretty <laughs> impressive. That's pretty impressive. Um, uh, okay, so 
uh, I want to switch gears here and now talk about this the 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 new initiative you're, you're involved with this NHL Breakaway, uh, and we're going to bring in uh, we're also going to bring in Laith Murad, also of NHL Breakaway. Uh, Laith, welcome to the program. I guess let, let's get started with you. Tell us a little bit about uh, about NHL Breakaway. Yeah, thanks. Well, pleasure to have us. Uh, I think Travis is a phenomenal. Um, member of the sweet team who's really bringing that expertise of hockey that historical nature that you know really authenticity to to the nhl breakaway program so you know we're blessed to have him on the team um as everyone has heard um just his background his passion for hockey uh is unmatched unparalleled so nhl breakaway is really a, an initiative in partnership with the nhl it's an official partnership uh with the NHL, NHL Players Association, as well as the NHL Alumni Association. And we're really excited. It's really, um, we believe that sports is kind of the best platform right now for digital collectibles. Um, digital collectibles are just like old school trading cards. Um, people still use trading cards, play with trading cards, but you know we have technology that allows it to go digital. Um, it's really created for people to trade, to gift, to be part of a community. It's for hockey fans. Um, we took the initiative that this should be a program for everyone. There's millions and millions and millions of hockey fans around the world, and they all love the sport. They love, you know, they love the game. They love the natural sounds of the game, the different angles, the you know, t skills and talent of the players, um, teams. The passion is unrivaled in sport and you know we're able to grab highlights and working with the nhl some rarely before seen clips footage and really package them into amazing highlights that are iconic and impact as travis likes to say impactful moments in the sport capture them memorialize them and allow fans to collect them and kind of show off their fan fandom and, and that's what we're excited about. So they are digital collectibles available for everyone, you know, to purchase as simple as a credit card um, and able to really get kind of like old school. You open a pack, you see what you get, you don't know who you'll get, and then you can trade with friends, you can trade with other members of the community. That's the nice part about the digital side. It's not just who you know, it's all the other fans that are a part of this community. And that's what we're really excited about. Well, it's a pretty impressive partnership. Uh, National Hockey League, NHL Players Association, NHL Alumni Association. A any problem getting all those folks on side, uh, Travis? No. Uh, I look. I get. I have the pleasure every day of, of working with all the folks. Not again. Not only at uh, at Lath and Ice Company Suite, um, but uh, with the with the league and the players' Association alumni and. You know, I, I, I've said before, but um, again, my, my entire life I've been around the sport of hockey. And I think what keeps me coming and, and being involved in sport is just the, the, the not only the love of the sport, you know, itself, but just the, the passion for it. Right. And, um, you know, and at, at every level. And, and this is certainly no different. The people that I get to work with are just as passionate um, and engaged as I've ever been in the sport and want to represent it in the best way possible. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, so let's talk about what's in the packs now. So I've, I've got, uh, you know, you can get a breakaway starter pack, which I have. Uh, uh, experience the sights and sounds of game-winning goals, it says. Clutch saves, Stanley Cup chasing highlights. You might get lucky enough to give me, maybe get a Connor McDavid uh, play. Uh, there are plays from Kale McCarr, Mitch Marner, uh, Stuart Skinner, uh, Luke Hughes, Jack Eichel, Elias, Elias Peterson, of course, many, many more. Uh, I... So I went to the trade lounge, and I had a uh, I had a Sid Crosby goal in my collection, and uh, I traded nice. that off for for uh, Dry Settle, <laughs> Stutzla, and Connecty. I love Ooh, the kid, okay. you know, but but yep. you know I, I'm thinking long term. I'm looking at the long range potential here. You've got a guy in Dry Settle who's already won an MVP award. You know, you I'm let me look at long term here. What do you think about trade late? <laughs> uh, look, I think. Your smile says it all. You know, you, you got the players you want. If you go back to old school, we all traded for the players we wanted. We traded for the plays, you know, you play for the teams. That's what we all collected. That's what we all used to love. And I think people underestimate the passion for your own favorite players, favorite teams, 
And, you know, having a trade lounge, I think, as you, as you just said, it allows you to just trade away and get what you want. And somebody sees some value in what you have and you see value in what they have. And it's great. It makes it super simple. And the digital technology makes it really easy to just trade it away. And, you know, since we, since we launched the trade lounge in the first 24 hours, we had thousands of trades, you know, 48 hours, we were thousands and thousands of trades were going on. And um, that just showed us how passionate the fans are and how they want to collect the players they love. Right. That's how I did it. So I went into the trade lounge and I noticed there's like several people of, uh, <laughs> are after my Crosby. And I, I, <laughs> there was, there was other offers at no chance, but this one, I thought, you know what, that's, that I, I can, I can. But got some, it's look, really good player look, for look, return. Really good. Look player. at your smile. It's like kind of going back to the old days of being a kid. Yeah. Like you're just yeah, yeah. having fun. And I think that, I think right. that is the underlying principle of Brickway. It's about community. It's about other hockey fans it's really about having fun and being authentic and you know it, it the trade lounge for us is more about connecting connecting with others it's a community it's a fan focused nature and so we've really looked at it that way as opposed to you know strictly about you know collectors it's really about how do we get fans together and you know a rising tide lifts all boats and you know we know the more fans that get involved the more fans you have to trade and then all of a sudden, you know, everyone's talking. Right. And fans can connect all over the world. Right. That, that's, that's exactly really cool. I mean, I remember back in the day when I thought it was really cool when the, uh, you know, the, the 3d cards came out and it kind of looked like they were moving. And now <laughs> your cards are literally video, you know, like they're, they're, they're uh, well, and, and they belong yeah, to you yeah. and they're your own. Yeah. Yeah. And credit to the NHL, you know, they have hours and thousands of hours of footage rarely before seen, you know, that they've been able to provide us. And you think of all the different cameras in today's environment going around an arena and getting access to some of those clips that, you know, you just don't normally see on broadcast and you won't see on YouTube and you won't see anywhere else. And that is, you know, combine that with the actual sounds of the ice and it's pretty special when you open it and you kind of go, wow, this is something I just will keep in love. Yeah. Beautiful stuff for sure. Uh, six uh, highlights from making the mark, opening ice, elites, opening ice, uh, the hunt for Stanley 2023 or uh, 2022, 23 base sets. Or, or, or what else uh, would you like to add to that? Well, we just, we, uh, you know, we have a, another pack coming out, uh, you know, with, where we're really honoring some of the, the first goals. Um, and that's coming out in a, in about a week. And so we're excited about that. And then, um, you know, the program is still young. And so there's a lot of gamification. We've got set completion where people can re win, you know, kind of real re rewards for, you know, freezing their highlights, holding on to them, completing a set. So we're not just looking at this as a single, as a single buy sell um, category, we really see this as a community and really focused in on fans. So if you add in gifting to sharing your public profile, to completing sets, to real rewards where, you know, you can, you can earn something along with trading. And then, you know, there, there's a lot more coming down the pipeline. We're not, we're not just working months, you know, a month ahead, we're working, you know, months and months ahead. So the vision is great. And, um, the team is fantastic. And so we really worked with the NHL to really paint this picture of how do we involve all the fans at every level, as opposed to, you know, just strictly a collector community. And I think that's what makes us unique. And that's what makes this uh, NHL breakaway special. Well, it is special. No doubt about that. What a great idea. A great, great uh, initiative. It's uh, well done. Um, so, if you're watching the show, you're very lucky because we have five packs to give away. The first five folks who DM us on Instagram at, at Joe Swiss Tilly or X at Joe Swiss Tilly or Facebook at Joe Tilly's Great Canadian Sports Show, uh, you can have a chance to win a free pack. We're going to give away five free packs over five weeks. So uh, drop me a line and you can get an opportunity to uh, get your pack today. Travis, Lath. Yeah. I really appreciate you guys being here. Travis, uh, thank you for helping Thanks. us catch up on uh, Hockey's First Family. It was really a lot of fun for us.
Oh, no. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. So really appreciate it. Always, yeah, I, I can talk hockey forever. So it's, it's yeah. lots of fun. Well, we may bring you back again sometime. Okay. So that's. Uh... <laughs> Sounds good. All right. We, I'll get, I'll get some you. trade advice for you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? Like, do I need some help? <laughs> I, I, you know, I think if you follow your passion and you trade what you love, you'll be happy no yeah. matter what happens. Okay. I know I'm going to hear a lot of, uh, a lot of grief from some friends of mine for trading syndicate, especially my buddy, Tom was a big uh, Penguins fan. Anyway. Uh, thank you guys for taking the time to join thank us. You. Good luck Thanks with so the NHL breakaway and uh, we'll be hearing lots from you in the future. Thank you. All right. Thanks thank again. You. Have a good one. Bye Joe. Take care. All right. Well, more when we come back. Thanks, guys. What our kids breathe matters more than ever. But how can you tell if a school is safe to breathe in? If you could actually see what's in the air, would you keep them home? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible, ensuring schools are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. Addiction Rehab Toronto, Toronto's number one alcohol and drug treatment center, saving lives, reuniting families. The only treatment center in the province to offer medical detox, treatment, sober living, and lifetime aftercare all in one place. Our unique and specialized programs are designed to equip our clients with the tools to successfully lead a life of dignity, respect, and purpose. Let us help save your life or your loved one's life. Call today for more information or to facilitate an intervention. 1-855-787-2424 or visit addictionrehabtoronto.ca. MNP, a leading Canadian national accounting tax and business accounting firm. MNP proudly serves and responds to the need of their clients in the private, public, and nonprofit sectors. Through partner-led engagements, MNP provides a collaborative, cost-effective approach to do business and personal strategies to help people and organizations to succeed across the country and around the world. With local offices in Oshawa, Mississauga, Burlington, and more, their team is here to support you. Visit mnp.ca today to learn more. And we want to thank all the folks who make this show possible. These are friends, trusted business associates, and all-around great folks. We highly recommend them all. Thank you for your support of Canadian sports. A reminder that the show is available on iTunes, Spotify, Breaker, Radio Public, Google Podcasts, and Pocket Cast, as well as the Spanglish Network, Buzz TV Live, and Zingo TV. Also, check out the show on YouTube. All of our past great shows and clips are on there, some shorts. Like and subscribe. It's absolutely free. Thank you once again to Travis Howe and Leif Murad for being on the show. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Brian Gribben Insurance Planning, helping you solidify your financial future. At BGIP, what we do that's unique in the marketplace is we show people how to spend and enjoy their money in their early years of retirement without the fear of running out. Also, we're able to do this without you having to change financial advisors. Please look us up at bgip.ca today. Let's book a 30-minute phone call to see how we can bring value to you and your family in your planning. Call Brian today for all your retirement needs. We did. 905-686-5678. Air quality at work matters more than ever. But there's no way to tell if a space is safe to breathe in. If you could actually see what's in the air, would you even come to work? Introducing Air Patrol, making the invisible visible, ensuring workplaces are safer for everyone. Breathe safely. Rooted in 60 years of tradition, Sleepy Hollow is a private golf club with a friendly community of members just minutes from Toronto. With mature trees and rolling fairways, Sleepy Hollow provides a challenging and enjoyable experience for passionate golfers. Enjoy great golf, amazing dining, and a picturesque patio second to none. Visit SleepyHollowCountryClub.com. Hi there, I'm Joe Tilly. Are you ready for an adventure of a lifetime? 
Next March, during the enchanting cherry blossom season, join me and my wife for an unforgettable two-week journey to Japan and South Korea. In Japan, you'll experience the magic of the season as we visit the stunning Osaka Castle against the backdrop of cherry blossoms. Feed the adorable Sika deer at Nara Park, glide through picturesque landscapes on the famed bullet train, cruise on Lake Kawaguchi, and witness the awe-inspiring view of Mount Fuji. Relax in natural hot springs and savor a delightful Fuji dinner banquet while dressing in traditional robes. And of course, we'll dive into Tokyo's cutting edge technology scene. In Korea, dress in elegant hanbok attire and step back in time at Chang Dok Gong Palace. Wander through Andong Village, a true glimpse into Korea's rich heritage. Delight your taste buds with the flavors of Korean barbecue. We'll even visit the DMZ area to get a glimpse of mysterious North Korea. And guess what? This incredible journey is all yours for just $54.99, all inclusive with direct flights from Vancouver or $58.99 from Toronto. Book now to unlock up to an extra $1,700 in upgrades and savings. Let's make some memories. Let's explore. Let's travel. Guests on Joe Tilly Sports receive a gift certificate from Classica Imports. Top of the line, imported men's clothing. Check out the Classica Essential Collection now. Go to shopclassica.com.